there friend welcome back to my channel it's Sarah here and this is Brown Family Goods today we're doing something a little bit different and that is going to be a Baker Creek seed haul I just received my package in the mail of my seeds from Baker Creek seeds so Baker Creek has heirloom seeds they are super super high quality it's been two years since I ordered the last time from Baker Creek seeds so I'm super excited to have gotten a few new seeds for the upcoming growing season and I wanted to open them up with you and go through my seed haul today. So come on along with me today and let's do a Baker Creek seed haul. gardener at all you probably have seen the Baker Creek seed catalog if you haven't gotten one of these yourself you can order this from their website and then every year year after year they will send you this Baker Creek seed catalog and it is the most beautiful catalog they have gorgeous pictures in here of all of their seeds now everything every single seed that they have does not make it into the catalog but they do such a beautiful and comprehensive job of putting all of this catalog together and it just makes you so excited for the next growing season. That's genius of them. So you can see in here all of the things that they have to offer and you can get a great idea about what these things are because so many of the seeds from Baker Creek Seeds are different varieties that you wouldn't find maybe locally. So there's so many fun things that you can try to grow and of course a lot of your old favorites too. So there are vegetable seeds, there are fruits, there are flower seeds, all kinds of things, bulbs when it's the right season, strawberries, garlic, onions, all kinds of things from top to bottom, whatever you're trying to grow, they have probably got a seed for you. I can't remember when I sat down to really go through the catalog, but I usually try to grab my catalog and if there are some things that catch my eye, I will jot those down and then go ahead to the website and place an order at some point, at some point. And a lot of these things I'm not growing anytime soon. So I won't even be seed starting for the earliest seed starts until the beginning of January. So I have plenty of time to compile all the seeds that I need for the year. But this is just a really fun way to do some dreaming about the garden in the winter and start to get excited for the next growing season. I am in zone 8B here, so we have a super long growing season, but this stuff here that I got in my package from Baker Creek Seeds will be things for next year's growing season. So let's crack into the bag here, see what all we have. Even their mailer is beautiful packaging. <laughs> you cannot beat their packaging. All right, so this is the list of what all I have here. It's pretty long, pretty long. The great thing about Baker Creek Seeds also is that they give you some free varieties with every single order. So when we come across those, I may be scratching my head just a little bit, but we'll see what we got for free. And that'll be very exciting as well. Okay, let's dive into this. Now this is in no particular order at all. I'm just gonna start pulling off the top of the pile here. First thing that I'm picking up here is cucumber. This is a Parisian pickling cucumber and I have heard about these that they're tender and great for pickling obviously as the name indicates. It says they make great tiny sweet pickles. The old French gherkin or cornichon pickler. Yeah, so these are gonna be a small variety that you can take off really, really little and pickle up. So hopefully these are gonna be great for us. I've never tried a Parisian pickling cucumber. Boston pickling is usually what I grow and I believe I ordered some of those in this order as well. So the next up here is cilantro. This is just a slow bolt, slow bolt cilantro. I usually order this. The last order that I placed a couple of years ago, I ordered several packages of this. You do need to stagger when you start this. So I typically order a couple of these. I think I only ordered one. I still have one more package left. 
Up next is butternut squash. This is the Waltham variety, which I have grown before and it did really well for me. This one makes nice big uh, butternut squash. The last time I grew it, I got several on each plant and that did really well. I did not grow any butternut squash this year. There's a lot of things that I didn't grow this year that I wish I had. I just, for some reason, did not have the bandwidth to really make a comprehensive garden this year. <laughs> I think because I was so tied up with the farmer's market, a lot going on and the garden, while I got in the basics and everything grew pretty well, I did not have the most comprehensive list of things in the garden this year, that's for sure. Oh, I found the Boston pickling cucumbers. I did order some of those, so I will enjoy these. These are one of my favorite cucumbers, probably my favorite one to grow because they always are sweet. They never seem to get bitter like some of the longer cucumbers can. So they always are a pretty much a sure thing. Okay, let's jump into the tomatoes. I ordered three different types of tomatoes here and let's go through those. So I ordered one variety of paste tomato, one of a cherry tomato, and one of a slicer tomato. The cherry tomatoes that I ordered here are called Sweetheart Cherry. Look at the beautiful pictures on this packaging. It is just always so enjoyable. Cherry tomato is packed with sweetness and a rich berry-like flavor. It is quite crisp and the fruit can keep, can keep on the extra long vine, making it extra high in sugar. That is the cherry tomato variety that I'm gonna try this year. Then I got the standard Amish paste tomato. In this, I think this is supposed to be a minimum of 25 seeds. That will be plenty for my garden for this year and I, I hope to do all 25 plants and the, at least get you know as many as possible from this package of seeds here. So I'll start them all and then hopefully get them all outside. So these are perfect for sauces and to put up tomatoes, to do diced tomatoes and things like that. So we will try those this year. Amish paste is what, these are supposed to make a nice big paste tomato. Whereas the Roma tomatoes that I grew last year were a bit on the smaller side. So then you have to do a lot more work of the peeling and all of that. Um, when you're working with a smaller tomato. So hopefully those Amish paste are gonna be a little bit larger and grow to a bigger size. Okay, and then the slicer tomato that I got is called Bread and Salt. I mean, it just looked incredible in the magazine. This says delectably meaty, ox heart type is a large round orb with dense and meaty flesh, exquisite for slicing, sauce making, and everything in between. So this can be sort of a versatile uh, variety of tomato, which sounds perfect. One that is not technically a tomato, but is in the same family, I got some ground cherries. I have seen people grow these a lot on the YouTube, um, so I wanna try these out. This is a, you can can these as well. So this says Polish heirloom variety has unusually fine flavor, very sweet with a nice hint of tartness, excellent choice for pies and preserves. So I think Alan will really like these because he likes tart and sweet. So hopefully that'll be something that he'll enjoy trying. That will definitely be our first time growing ground cherries. Next up is tomatillos. I did not grow these in the garden this year because again, I forgot, didn't even think about them until later in the season. I was like, hmm, I didn't grow any tomatillos at all. So these are supposed to be larger tomatillos. This one is a Rio Grande Verde and they're supposed to be nice and large. So again, the larger the fruit that you're working with, the easier it is to work with, in my opinion. Okay, next up, this is a one-off thing here and I wanted to try them, cow peas. These are black eye pea. So I definitely wanna give these a shot this year. Growing our own peas, growing our own beans is something that we really want to try. Now that we're gonna be expanding our garden next year, we're gonna have some room for things like this. So this says trellis to conserve space. So hopefully this will be a vining pea that can grow up a, tre a trellis. Next up, oh, I do have one more pea. This is a cow peas also, and it is a pink eye purple hole pea. So last year I did pink eye purple holes at the end of the growing season, I, and they did not do well because there was so much pest pressure on them. It was extreme. Um, so this year I wanna try these again, but I'm gonna try to put them in a little bit earlier than what I did last year. I don't think I planted out my pink eye purple hole peas last year until late July, I believe, and the pests were too out of control at that point, and they just ate the plants down continually. I did not get a harvest from them at all. 
So this year I will do some things, or this coming up growing season, I'll do some things a little bit different in that regard. But this is another pink eye, purple hole pea. Let's see if these are, yeah, these are um, pole, a pole variety also. So they'll need some trellising too. Okay, I only ordered one variety of a melon and that is of course the Kajari melon. Have you seen this all over the internet at this point? If you're a gardener and you watch gardening channels, you probably have. You've probably seen people raving about the Kajari melon and I need to know what it's all about. You know what I mean? We love melons. We haven't grown very many of them, but we're gonna give these Kajaris a try for sure. Okay, next up is corn. I have two different varieties of corn. This one is Buell sweet corn. It's just a nice solid variety of sweet corn. We will give that a try this year. Yellow sweet corn with seven foot stalks, two ears per stalk. Old fashioned sweet corn taste. So that sounds perfect, doesn't it? Hopefully these are gonna do well for us. If you plant corn into big blocks of like at least four foot by four foot, then it has really good chances of getting nicely pollinated. So I ordered two packs of this so that we'll have plenty to, to plant out for that. Another one that I wanted to try is this beautiful glass gem corn. Come on, look at how gorgeous that is. Look at that. Can you even? Bred by Carl Barnes, legendary corn breeder of Cherokee descent, three to eight inch ears covered in translucent kernels, really do shine brilliantly like glass. Amazing color. So you can leave these on, you can leave these to dry and do popcorn out of these, or of course you can eat it fresh as well. Yeah, I mean, that's gorgeous. Okay, next up is flowers, greeneries, all of that type of stuff. Let's see what we have here. Last year was, year before last, I grew a few flowers. I grew some dahlias, I grew zinnias, cosmos, and things like that. Last year, I grew even more flowers and a ton of petunias. If you have not tried to grow your grow petunias yourself, you must try it. They grew, now maybe it's just our climate and where we are and the conditions and things like that, but the petunias for me grew like wildfire. wildfire. And at this point, they're reseeding themselves everywhere because the seed is so fine on those petunias that it just blows and seeds everywhere. Um, okay, so let's go through the flowers that, the seeds that I ordered from Baker Creek for flowers for this coming up year. First things first, Cosmos. This variety was beautiful. It's called Seashells Cosmos. And look at that beautiful color. Cone shape rather than flat flowers in a deep rose, shell pink, and snowy white. So this is a mix of Cosmos in here. Next up is, did I have any more Cosmos? Nope. Next up is Coleus. Last year and the year before both, I grew coleus and it is so awesome to grow. It's a great plant to grow on its own. It's beautiful by itself. But if you like to make planters, like putting some petunias and some greenery, so thriller, filler, spiller, you know, those type of planters, which I love to do. Um, this is the perfect filler. Look at the color on this variety. It is called Colosha Sunset Coleus. And that sunset color is incredible. I think it's gonna be so beautiful. A burst of tropical sunset colors. Yes, it is. So the coleus was super easy to grow as well and it looks beautiful. The instant it sprouts, those little coleus sprouts, they're this color or whatever color. If you get the bright pink and green, so you get instant gratification when you grow coleus because it sprouts up out of the ground in that beautiful color of whatever it's gonna be. So it's very satisfying to grow. Next up is petunias. This variety I grew last year and I love them. This is called Superbissima. I have no idea if I'm saying that right, but this is a beautiful petunia and this is gonna be a mix of the colors of that variety. They have the biggest petunia flowers on there and then they're like a ruffled edge flower. If you can see that, I'll try to put a picture up too, but they are so gorgeous when they grow and they just look incredible. 
I grew those last year. I was super happy with them and they were not delicate, tender, nothing. They were super hardy all throughout the summer. Next up here is a variety of nasturtium. Tip top rose nasturtium. Of course, nasturtiums are an edible flower. Um, this is a favorite edible flower in a soft rose color. So plants reach 14 inches tall, mounding habit with leaves that are also edible and make a spicy green and salad. Now I have never eaten nasturtiums at all because mine have never done super, super well, but hopefully this year I'm gonna be able to grow this beautiful variety of rose nasturtiums. We're gonna give it a try. Something that did great last year that I did not, I was too busy to even put up any is chamomile. Why did I not harvest some for teas and things like that? I have no idea, but I just let it pass me by. And then by the time I wanted to put chamomile up, it was too late. This is an annual and it makes tiny small flowers, which are super aromatic and make great tea. Pop the little flower heads off and save them in a jar or something, then you can do all kinds of things with it. So this year, we're definitely gonna grow more chamomile. This year also, the goal is to save some. <laughs> so hopefully I will, right? Okay, next up is a couple of varieties of zinnias. This one is called Persian carpet zinnias. I mean, look at these gorgeous zinnias. Wow. Stunning gold, red, chocolate, orange, and cream, mini bicolors. So this, that, look at how beautiful those are. Yeah, I cannot wait to grow those. Zinnias are super easy to grow. They're super hardy. And if you sort of pinch them when they are first starting to grow, they will make all kinds of flowers on them. So these are gonna be super fun to grow. Look at how gorgeous those are. Man, I can't wait. This other zinnia is a beautiful red zinnia and it looks like it's a little bit different, right? This is a giant zinnia variety. Flowers are stately, deep red and have a pointed cactus type petals. So you can see they don't look like a typical zinnia at all. So these are gonna be super fun to grow too in a beautiful red color, of course. Okay, I just have two things left and then I'll show you my free seeds as well. Up next is one more red flower and that is a salvia variety summer jewels red salvia salvia is great for pollinators this is one that i want to have out super early so i'm going to start it as soon as i can let's see what it says full sun sprouts in 10 to 30 days so we really will have to start this early inside under the grow lights i'm sure lipstick red half inch blooms this tidy variety reaches just 18 inches tall and at maturity, it makes perfect bedding, border, or container plant. Attracts droves of butterflies and hummingbirds. So this is a great, great pollinator friendly plant. And those red flowers will bring all kinds of good things in for us. The last flower variety that I bought, that I purchased is Calendula. This is another one that I grew last year. It went like gangbusters. It was beautiful too. This is a variety Pacific Beauty mix. So there's lots of colors in there of oranges and yellows, and it's gonna be really pretty. This is something else that I want to save some of this year and dry. Description of it says, a historic heirloom garden plant that was known as pot marigold. Lovely flowers up to four inches in colors of orange, apricot, yellow, peach, and cream. So this is gonna be a beautiful variety of calendula. So let's see what I got for free here from Baker Creek. They always are so lovely to send along a few free things with your order. And this is gonna be so fun to grow these. Look at these tiny tomatoes, spoon tomatoes. I saw these on their website and I saw, um, I think it was Kevin and Sarah at Living Traditions Homestead. I believe these are the ones he was growing, these tiny little tomatoes. Micro mini fruit, maybe the world's tiniest tomatoes it says. Fire engine red fruit arranged beautifully along super long trusses. Bold, classic, red, tangy tomato flavor. I mean, they're adorable. Look at how they fit on a spoon. Next up is bok choy. This is something we could probably grow over the winter here. This says best planted in cool, so cool spring or fall conditions. So in place. So maybe out in the garden. Love bok choy. I don't think I've ever grown it successfully though. And then the last one is a pepper variety. This is called 
Dadel, Dadel Pepper, Dadel, I'm not sure. Uh, blazing Hot, Blunt Little, three and a half inch fruit, ripens to bright orange yellow. Vicious Heat, Complex Fruity Flavor. Okay, well, if we need a hot pepper, this is going to get us there, it sounds like. They, they reiterate that it is very hot in the description twice. So, <laughs> in case you didn't get it the first time. So, that was our free stuff from Baker Creek Seeds. Three free things with each order, and you will get whatever they send you, but there will be some fun things to try in there as well. That was my Baker Creek Seed order, and I am so excited for this coming up year's growing season. I'm definitely already starting to dream and plan and think about what we're going to grow next year in order to try and grow more of our own food here on our homestead. We have the room, we have the desire, we have the energy, so... If we think about it now in these cooler winter months where we have lots of downtime uh, to just dream things up and think about how we're going to implement them, then hopefully we can put our plan in action next spring and start to grow so much food. I really appreciate you coming along today to hear about my Baker Creek seed order. I have enjoyed going through it with you. I can't wait for next spring when we can start to seed and put all this stuff into the ground. Thanks so much for being here and I will see you back here again real soon.